Hello, Laura. We're gonna take a look at your second video here. So we'll just start playing. I may stop and start a little bit as we go. Uh, first thing, um, we have your piece just basically starting and um, that's a choice that we make uh, when we create video uh, as whether it's going to have a pre-roll, whether it's going to begin with uh, black or, or nothing and then fade up and begin, whether it starts with a, a J cut, whether it starts with audio and then video comes up. The start of our piece really, ha you know, it's not something to overlook. How it begins is very, very important. So consider that. Uh, it shouldn't be an arbitrary thing. If it just starts like that, there's a reason that it needs to just start like that. Sometimes it's because we do a loop um, because the piece is meant to feed back on itself and continue. Uh, and, and other times it's, it's, it's because we're creating something that is meant to attach to another piece, which is, you know, meant to kind of connect itself and those kinds of things. However, this piece is meant to, uh, to, to be presented. It should be something that is definitely, uh, deliberate, uh, that it just starts. Second is, as you can see, your text uh, is very thin, which I think is okay. Uh, normally we do have text on video that is more bold. However, uh, as you could see, the, the word the is completely obscured here by, uh, by your knee. Um, and so, you know, we have to pay attention to those kinds of things, especially in the beginning whether that's an awkward transition in the beginning where you know we, we are sort of obscuring part of it, even though we do see it eventually like this, maybe we're not, maybe the, the text doesn't come up until your knee is out there like that so that we don't initially see the obscurity that, that the, the, so at this moment, the text comes up uh, that is would would maybe be more appropriate so that it feels more natural. I know this sounds maybe sounds a little bit, you know, like we're picking with needles, but it really is comes down to that where we're refining and figuring out. We've we're two seconds into this and I've already been talking for a minute on, you know, how to start and, you know, where your, your text ought to be. Uh, but that's what, that's what you end up doing when you when you kind of get to a point with a piece that you then need to uh, take it to another level. All right, let's uh, let's continue forward with this. All right, so then what we have here that you set up, I mentioned it a little bit, uh, is almost a surveillance thing where the camera, where we are not really voyeurs. Uh, in other words, I don't feel like I am actually there. You know, in other words, I don't feel like I'm hovering over the top of you looking. What I feel like is that this was sort of like recorded footage that was maybe from some other time, right? Uh, and so and that, that sets up a certain feel to it. That we're jump cutting here is perfectly fine. I, I don't think it it uh, interferes with anything. That your head is in the way sometimes of the piece is again lends itself to the idea that this is surveillance. This isn't something that we're meant to see the entire thing of. Um, that you put the the sort of lines there that that tell you where your frame is, your video frame is. I don't think it screams out that that's what they're there for, but I know that's what they're there for, uh, probably to indicate to you to that's where the edge of your picture frame is. Now we moved the camera a little bit there, which is a little bit strange. It's unfortunate because I think we had something going there with the uh, with the camera being in that one spot and that the angle in which it was, I thought worked very well. Now what we have is this, is your head is, is more toward the bottom there. And, and I think it's less of an appealing shot. Uh, I think where we were here, um, that this was a much more appealing 
uh, angle, actually. Uh, not that this is bad, but I think it was a better angle here uh, before. Now this is a less good angle, um, but it didn't ruin it. But I, I just think if we're comparing the two. The first shot was was a, a better uh, a better shot. I don't know if you you bumped the camera or something like that happened, or you had to take a break and come back or whatnot. No. So, you know, the, the, the kids talking and stuff like that, I, I, I think we could have pushed that farther. Um, you know, I know you were talking about there was all these distractions and stuff like that. I think we might have been able to, you know, kind of play with that a little bit more um, as we went um, with the, the idea of all this activity that's happening around you and the energy and the focus that it takes to sort of put that out uh, uh, as you're doing the... Um, as you're doing the drawing, the water at the end, you know, um, that's an interesting kind of uh, sort of conclusion uh, that you do there. Uh, I like what, what, what happened there uh, with it, you know, in, in that um, it creates this something that happens uh, at the end, whether it be that it gets washed away. It really doesn't get washed away <clears throat> in the end. Um, but then it's a different drawing that you show us. Um, so it, it's a little, it's, it's not strange, it's a little um, peculiar. I'm wondering, you know, okay, what, what's, go, what's happened there? Uh, it, there's, a, there's a question mark that, that I'm left with in terms of understanding a little bit what, you know, what the transition was. You know what I mean? Um, was the water transitioning supposed to transform this drawing into this drawing? Um, you know, were they supposed to be two different, you know, they, they transformed, I mean, it's kind of cool, um, how it, how it worked out that way. Um, you know, but what, what is that, what was supposed to happen? And if so, um, it would have really been important to try to match them more carefully and that kind of thing. So lots of potential to this. I think this this has a, a potential. Also, would have been really awesome to see a William Kentridge kind of thing if it moved and stuff. That would have been kind of super cool. Um, I'm really interested in what you do with this idea of the chalk drawing and uh, seeing how it moves, for, moves forward and what you do with time-based media. It seems like you've got some uh, some thoughts about how you want to incorporate it into your own work, um, how, where it lies, where it, ha where it fits into your medium, uh, into your, into your own, uh, work, uh, and, um, and where it goes from, from here, whether it, it contributes to your professional work or whether it, uh, it, whether it plays a role in your, uh, in your creativity and it sort of is your own work that you just sort of do uh, for your own satisfaction, that kind of thing. So uh, I look forward to more of your stuff and uh, we'll see you in the studio. Bye-bye now.